I'm going to talk about startling forces and answer the questions, what pushes fluid out of capillaries, what pulls fluid into capillaries, what role do lymphatics play, and what is edema? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. To begin, Ernest Starling at the end of the 1800s demonstrated that there is a force that pushes fluid out of capillaries a hydrostatic pressure. But he also demonstrated another opposite force that sucks fluid into capillaries, an oncotic pressure. And he called this Starling's principle, which is that fluid movement across the capillary is determined by hydrostatic and oncotic pressures on either side of the capillary, much like a tug of war. And what was known for a number of years as Starling's principle is now simply Starling's forces. And these are very important in medicine because Starling's forces regulate fluid movement between the vascular and interstitial compartments. They influence tissue hydration, edema formation, and the overall fluid balance in the body. What is hydrostatic pressure? It's the pressure exerted by blood against the vessel wall. It drives fluid out of the capillary into the interstitial space or a filtration. There's plasma in a capillary and the hydrostatic pressure filters fluid out of the capillary via this pushing pressure of blood created by left ventricular contraction for systemic circulation. Think of it like a soaker hose in your garden. But hydrostatic pressure is highest at the arterial end and lowest at the venule end of a capillary. If that's a capillary and that's the arterial end, which begins with 35 to 40 millimeters of mercury pressure, the capillary hydrostatic pressure tapers from the arterial to the venous end from 35 down to 15-ish millimeters of mercury. If we then also compare and show this same thing using a graph at the bottom where the y-axis is pressure in millimeters of mercury and I'm going to show the hydrostatic pressure and notice that net hydrostatic pressure in blue continue declines as we go from arterial to the venous end. So that net hydrostatic pressure decreases because fluid is lost across the capillary wall. Notice that water flowing out of the capillary decreases from left to right as the pressure decreases. What could increase net filtration at the capillaries? There's many things, one of which is to increase back pressure in the venous end. The, if we have, say, diminished venous return, like right-sided heart failure, fluid and pressure build up in the right ventricle and the right atrium and the systemic veins that cause the systemic capillary shing, to increase its hydrostatic pressure, which increases fluid movement into the interstitium, and that's edema. Edema is excess fluid that accumulates in the tissues and swelling. Look at the right foot versus the left foot. Skin is puffy, it's stretched, it's shiny. And it often happens and occurs in the extremities like ankles, feet, legs, and hands. What is oncotic pressure or colloid osmotic pressure? It's the osmotic pull exerted by plasma proteins, mainly albumin, across the capillary wall, drawing water into the capillaries. And albumin is shown by those little purple things in the, in the plasma. And that oncotic pressure draws fluid into the capillary via the osmotic pull of albumin, a sucking force. Now, what does, why does albumin create a sucking force? Because the protein albumin is too large to leave the capillary and thus cannot cross the capillary wall. So its concentrated presence creates an osmotic pull, an oncotic pressure that draws water from the interstitial space into the blood or retains fluid in the blood. Albumin, in addition to maintaining vascular fluid balance through oncotic pressure, it also carries hormones, fatty acids, bilirubin, and drugs. It's, prim it's a primary plasma protein and it's produced by hepatocytes. Albumin creates this constant os oncotic pressure that absorbs water into the capillary along its entire length from arterial to the venous end. So if we see that y-axis as pressure in millimeters of mercury and the red represents oncotic pressure, watch as we go from left to right, the net oncotic pressure does not change because albumin is too large to cross the capillary wall. So the upward arrows show water flowing into the capillary and that absorption of fluid is consistent from arterial to venule end of an entire capillary. 
What would happen to net filtration if a patient, say, had low albumin? There's normal albumin levels, there's low albumin levels, or hypoalbuminemia. Let's predict what would happen to the interstitial fluid when there's low albumin. Would interstitial fluid decrease, increase, or would there be no change? There would be an increase of interstitial fluid because with low albumin, there's low oncotic pressure in the capillary, which is low pulling force of water on water into the capillary, which means we lose more water into the tissues. And that's another example of a way of getting edema. What is net filtration pressure? Well, that's the algebraic sum of hydrostatic and oncotic pressure. It determines if there's a net efflux of water out of the capillary, filtration, or a net influx of water into the capillary, absorption. The blue represents net hydrostatic pressure, the red then oncotic pressure, and as we move through the capillary from arterial to venous end and overlay both of those pressures, the blue represents the net filtration when we overlay hydrostatic and oncotic on the arterial end, but look on the venous end, there's a net absorption, but notice there's more surface area for filtration. Therefore, there is more filtration than absorption in most capillaries. That was fun. Let's do it again. And nothing says fun like math. We're going to show all these again using Starling's equation where the filtration is showing the net filtration pressure that we just talked about. The net movement because of the net pressure of fluid across the capillary wall typically done in unit time and area. If that is positive, that means there is more fluid filtered out of the capillary. If it's negative, that means there's more fluid absorbed into the capillary. The KF on the other side shows the capillary filtration coefficient, the permeability of water at the capillary membrane times the actual surface area of that capillary membrane. Basically, how leaky and how big the exchange surface the capillary is. So if there's a large KF, that means there's more filtration, like you'd have in the glomerulus that has numerous fenestrations. If there is a small KF, that means there is a reduction of filtration for the same pushing pre for the same um, pressure inside the um, vessels, like you'd see in say a vessel in the brain, the blood-brain barrier. The rest of this equation is Starling's forces, where hydrostatic pressure is shown in P and oncotic pressure is shown in the, um, on the thing that looks like the pi symbol. That's what determines the net filtration and absorption. It's all measured in millimeters of mercury, and just for simplicity, I'm not going to talk about middle, middle, millimeters of mercury. I'm just going to show numbers, okay? Hydrostatic pressure. In that little area, the PC is the capillary pressure. That means the pushing pressure on the arterial end into the tissues, which is 40. Now, the interstitial fluid, that means there's actually pressure of the tissues pushing against the capillary. It's small. It's typically two. Let's plug and chug those numbers. Now, the oncotic pressure is the oncotic pressure, meaning the capillary. That means the sucking pressure or pulling pressure of fluid into the capillary. That's typically 25. But there's also a little bit of oncotic pull in the tissues, typically three. Let's plug and chug those numbers. If we put them together now, 40 minus 2 gives us 38 minus 25 minus 3, which is 22. So when we take the net filtration of all those Starling's forces, it gives us positive 16. That means there's a net outflow or filtering pressure of 16 millimeters of mercury, which means there's more fluid moving out on the arterial end. Now let's look at the venual end, where if we recall, there is less pushing pressure on the venous end. It's only 10 millimeters of mercury because we've lost a lot of fluid. But the same amount of pressure pushing against the capillary and from the tissues. Plug and chug. And oncotic pressure, the same oncotic pressure of 25 millimeters of mercury because albumin doesn't leave. And the same amount of pull into the tissues. Let's plug and chug. So the hydrostatic pressure on the venous end is much less. It's only 8 millimeters of mercury minus 22, which gives us 
negative 14. That means that there is an increase of absorption on the venous end. But when we add the arterial and the venous end together, it gives us a net force of two millimeters of mercury pressure, showing a net outflow of fluid in most systemic capillaries. More filtration than there is absorption. That means there's always going to be excess fluid building up in the interstitial space, which you might be thinking, isn't that edema? So we, but we don't have edema everywhere typically. And the reason why is mother nature gave us an outflow. And that means excess interstitial fluid is absorbed by the lymphatic system. There's more filtration than absorption, which means we should get this increase in excess interstitial fluid, but that excess interstitial fluid is absorbed by the lymphatic system. There's a lymphatic capillary, and that excess fluid pushes on the side of these lymphatic capillaries, and we have these little trap door, these valve-like properties, that the excess fluid flows into these lymphatic capillaries, which then this excess fluid flows along the lymphatic system, those lymphatic vessels through those lymph nodes and returns to the systemic circulation through the right lymphatic, right, the thoracic duct on the left and the right lymphatic duct on the right, draining back into systemic circulation. And that excess fluid decreases. Therefore, the lymphatic system returns excess interstitial fluid to the bloodstream. And that, my friends, is Starling Forces in a nutshell.